In today's daily tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make wacky, wiggly, rubbery text, just like this. Stay tuned. Big thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring this show. Uh, right now I'm watching a course on understanding vector paths in Adobe Illustrator, which is really great because I don't really know a whole lot about Adobe Illustrator. I'm trying to improve my knowledge of the program um, so I can do more work with it. So uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about Adobe After Effects or something like Illustrator or even marketing, website design, anything like that, uh, lynda.com is really, really freaking great. <laughs> And uh, I learned a lot of what I know now about uh, all these programs from lynda.com. And I just love how it's uh, a very seamless, start to end, comprehensive way to learn things as opposed to uh, YouTube tutorials kind of being a little bit scattered all over the place. That's pretty much that. If you decide to use the link down in the description below to uh, start a free trial with lynda.com, I'll get a small kickback. And uh, it's a great way to support the show if uh, you're looking to learn stuff in the meantime anyways. So. That's lynda.com. Thank you guys so much for putting up with random sponsorship stuff and uh, on to the tutorial. Hey guys, Rio here and welcome back to another hashtag daily tut tutorial here on TGOD Designs. Uh, first off, I just wanted to thank you guys. Uh, this series has been going off pretty well. Like, um, I don't know, the, like the comments have been on point. You guys seem to be loving uh, the daily tutorials on, on After Effects, Effects and Techniques. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Like, I don't know, I was, I was sitting down yesterday and I was just reading through the comments. Like, you guys left a lot of comments yesterday. Like, I don't know, it was really nice reading through all of them. Um, so I did just want to say thank you for all the support so far. Um, I thought doing daily tutorials would be a lot more draining, but it's actually not too bad and it's you guys are loving them. So it's, uh, it's pretty great. Um, and also, th thank you for uh, 5,000 subscribers. Like, <laughs> I was sitting... Uh, it, I literally was at my computer uploading the intro for Rai Guy Rocky and I was on the edit info and settings and I saw like the new section that said um, video credits which is only available for like 5,000 subscribers or more which, which is ridiculous I don't know why that is but um, I, I saw that I'm like wait a second that's new and I realized like I was close to 5,000 subscribers so I actually missed it but it I don't know, I thought that was just like the weirdest way to have like realized that we hit 5,000 subscribers. I feel like a horrible person for that being the way to finding out, but I knew we were close. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much. Like, I don't know. It's just kind of amazing seeing since um, this channel was inactive for so long and now we're kind of getting back to it and it's it feels great. Um, but anyways, that's enough random talk. Uh, let's get to the point of this video or this daily tutorial which is a uh, wacky wiggly rubbery text is what I'm calling it I guess. Um, this is kind of like a little mini BTS for the intro I uploaded for Rai Guy Rocky yesterday. Um, so in that in that intro I had like uh, the text that was rubbery and uh, people were interested on in how that went down so I'm basically going to uh, tell you guys how that goes down. And uh, this is a really simple beginner tutorial. Um, you don't really need to know a whole lot about After Effects. I uh, would like you to be probably comfortable with like how movement and easing works. Uh, and we do like two lines of um, expressions, but that's about it. Um, and as you can see, the, it, the outcome's pretty cool. So hopefully you guys are down for the ride. Um, I've basically gotten my text and pre-comped it, uh, so it's 1920 by 1080, um, and that'll be important a little uh, in a second, but I'll talk about that later. So anyways, I'm going to bring up the position, position, and we're going to move it around so that we can make it look rubbery. Um, so to make it easier on things, I'm going to separate our dimensions here to the X and Y, and I'm basically going to keyframe the Y position and move about, gosh, I don't know, 30 seconds and then move it up right there and then go to about well the end in my case being uh, about a minute and a half or a second and a half sorry <laughs> a minute and a half would be uh, insane and I'm gonna go back down to its original starting position of 540 pixels so as you can see there we have our movement and when I uh, ram preview this back oop, is it not doing anything or I don't think our middle keyframe stuck uh, let me redo that so when we play this back, it's uh, it's of course linear. And uh, 
we want to make we want the movement of our text to match the the feel of the effect we're putting on it so we want even the movement to resemble something elastic and rubbery if if our movement doesn't match that look and feel the cc the the cc bend it which is what will make the text uh bend it will feel really out of place in order to kind of really sell this effect you have to have everything um, match the same feel so before we apply the bend we need to make the movement itself look kind of elastic and rubbery right now it's linear and uh, it just looks like it's someone's like putting it up and down on a forklift which is not what we're going for we're looking for like more of a rubber bandy type feel um, so in order to do that we need to open up the graph editor so I'm gonna select all of our keyframes and press uh, shift F3 to bring up our graph editor or you could click the graph editor icon up here whatever suits your fancy I'm more of a keyboard shortcut kind of guy um, and we're gonna select our middle keyframe here and don't worry if you don't know how I'm or why I'm doing this uh, mainly because I've worked with the graph editor for a long time and I, after you do that you kind of just get a feel for how different curves look and feel uh, so like this will be kind of more of an elastic uh, enter in fast slow down and go up so if this is, feels out of place for you don't worry you can just copy my graph for now um, but I do recommend that you play around with moving some some layers positions and messing around with the the curve editor to really get a grasp on how different curves look um, you won't understand right away but the more you do it the better you'll get and it's probably one of the best things that you could practice um, so I'm press shift F3 to get out of that again and we're going to preview how this looks and that's kind of rubbery uh, almost to where I how I want it to feel but not exactly quite there and I'm not sure why let me play it back a few more times so it goes up and then kind of eases down like that and I think I know why I think I want this guy to be fast in and this guy to be like this we kind of ease in and ease out type thing so let's see how that looks I think that's a little bit too much of an ease let's kind of give it a little bit of a start up there but then let's let this guy come all the way in so like that let's see how that looks yeah so that looks kind of rubbery and elastic and it'll be perfect for our bend it cool um, so now we have finished with our movement and it looks like it'll match pretty well Go ahead and save here because that's important um, I'm going to apply CC bend it to our text here you'll see it cuts it off right away uh, that's fine for now but uh, we are going to want to do a few things to fix that so our start parameter right here I'm going to select our target icon and I'm basically going to put the start Oop, let me go ahead and grab that again so I'm going to grab the start and I'm going to put the start in the very middle of our text which is the middle of our layer for this point uh, for this example and I'm going to grab the end and put it at the very rightmost edge of where our text is and it's cut off right now so I can't really see it but I think it's right about there okay now I'll move it in um, at the very rightmost I guess in this case the leftmost edge you can do it on the rightmost edge it really doesn't matter just one of the one of the side edges and make sure it's perfectly in line with the center bit and it's not like off because then you'll get some clipping on the sides um, so they're perfectly in line and one's on one of the edges and, and the start is in the middle um, and then you want to have the oop sorry I played it for some reason what's going on there let's set our layer back um, and let's do our uh, render pre-start to bend which is default and our distort to extended and once we've done that you'll uh, see that when we uh, change our bend we get a bend and now all that's left is um, all that's left is to just uh, make the bend go with our position um, if your text gets cut off and I'll kind of simulate this real quick uh, I'm gonna go into my pre comp uh, and get rid of all this extra space um, some of you may have text that's getting cut off 
Uh, you don't have to do this. This is just for example. Um, I think I have bend it in this composition as well, so I'll get rid of that too. Um, but I'll basically just show you guys how to deal with uh, your text getting cut off. So that looks fine. I'll get rid of the bend it because this is our pre comp with just the text and nothing else. And there's no reason for the bend it to be in this one. Yet again, just example. I uh, don't have to copy this. Uh, so let's say your text is getting cut off when you do the bend it like this. Um, in order to fix that, what you need to do is go over here to your effects and presets and type in grow bounds and apply it on your on your layer but put it before CC bend it and uh, jack up the grow bounds and put this to oh gosh bend extended and then uh, that should have helped hold on there's always a little bit of troubleshooting involved oh and uh, make sure that your uh, your um, end your end your end like pointer thingy is all the way at the edge and uh, grow bounds just basically make sure that uh, when you have it bent like this it doesn't get cut off it basically grows the bounds before the effect is applied uh, which is really really useful effect and uh, I don't know I don't see a lot of people using it or knowing about it and it can be useful in a lot of things where the text is clipping outside of where the layer boundaries are. So the natural cutoff point will be where the layer boundaries are. But if you do grow bounds, your effects uh, will be allowed to, or they'll be permitted to extend past that arbitrary barrier. Um, so that is that. And that's what you do if your text is getting cut off. Um, so I'll go ahead and set our bend down to zero, and let's take a look at the movement here. So it's go it's going really fast and slowing down, and it's going really fast and slowing down. So when it goes really fast, it's going to have a tendency to have the ends lag behind because if, like, basically this effect is simulating if it's like got a rope around the middle and it's being pulled up and pulled down, and the sides are like, whoa, what's happening? And they're like reacting late. So when it moves really fast, it's like someone's yanking a, a, a like a string from the middle and yanking it up, yanking it up. Um, so the ends are gonna want to naturally kind of lag behind in this instance, and they're slowly gonna be brought back to equilibrium as it slows down. So we're gonna kind of simulate effect, that effect right here. So right now, nothing's ha no, nothing has happened to the text. So uh, we're gonna keyframe the bend at zero. I'm going to press U on my layer here to bring up the, um, the, all the keyframes. So nothing's happened. And then it gets yanked really hard. Um, so around halfway between the two positions, uh, which isn't necessarily halfway between these two keyframes, keep in mind. See how it's like uh, halfway between where it started, like uh, right, right here, and where it ends right here. It's halfway, but since we changed with like the timing, uh, it's not necessarily halfway between these keyframes. So keep that in mind. Uh, find where the position is about halfway, and we're going to keyframe the bend to kind of have the ends lag behind to about where they started. So that looks like about where they started. Um, so the bend kind of goes like, shoop, like it's being pulled up by a string. And then we're, when it gets to the top, it's all done being yanked. So it needs to go back to um, the edges having caught up. So it's like, oh, hey, we caught up now. So it kind of looks like that, which already looks good, but we still need to put easing on this. Um, but keep in mind that it's already, it's still linear, but it, it still looks pretty decent. Um, but let's continue um, doing the down swipe before we apply any easing to it. Um, so we're going to go to here, and then we're going to go to about where it's halfway between the start and end position, which is about right there. Keep in mind, yet again, not simply between where the two key uh, in the middle of the two keyframes but in the middle of where it's positionally located um, and we're going to apply our bend to what it would look like so I'm gonna put the ends to about where they started which is right there boom and then when it gets to the end it's all done bending and it goes back to zero all right so it looks like that and that is some wacky text. Now let's go ahead and add some easing to the bending portion of this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play around with some curves here. 
um, and yet again uh, you'll get a feel for how these look um, based on how much time you've had in your graph editor so the the first little bit here is perfectly fine because what this is doing is it's keeping the R and the Y in the same position as where they started so linear is fine for this example um, because it's kind of like a, a jolt and we want the R and Y to basically look like they haven't moved while the G G and the U um, kind of get yanked up so that's fine but we want the ease out to be more gradual which is why I've added this this curve right here um, so just a little bit and then I'm gonna have this curve be in and out and then basically um, hold down control and alt and click on this to kind of get it to be like they're connected instead of looking like this we don't want it to have any um, break um, actually maybe we do let me think about this yeah okay we do want it to look like this uh, yet again a, a lot of working with the graph editor and knowing what you want your stuff to look like so it'll kind of look like this and then when it gets yanked down we want to go for yet again a linear feel Oop. so let me hold down control and ooh, how do we just do one I forgot alt yeah just do alt to break the tangents and just do one and then uh, so this okay so we want the R and Y to kind of look like they're staying in place Boom. it's a little bit much don't you think uh, let's do something like that and then change that to kind of have a curve um, there you go so kind of look, look like that and we want this guy to ease in okay so it's probably not gonna look the best but let's preview it actually that looks pretty darn good I think better than the thing I did in the intro um, it's a little bit uh, too much bent even on the downswipe um, because it's not it's going slower on the downswipe so I'm only gonna do a small bend Uh, and I'm probably going to bring this tangent out a little bit to kind of make it ease in. So I think that I think that'll be pretty spot on. Let's go ahead and take a look at full, 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 uh, full speed there. And that's how you do. Uh, what am I calling this? Wacky wiggly rubbery text. Um, basically, just the fundamentals are: make sure your animation matches the effects that you're putting on stuff. And uh, CC Bendit is pretty useful. Um, I don't think this look goes good with a lot of things. I would venture as far to say it didn't really fit the intro I made for Raigai Rocky all that much. But it's an interesting effect and if you use it applicably, applicably I think you'll be pretty happy with the results. So, uh, that's pretty much that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of... Uh, not really quick. It ended up being kind of long. But this simple but thoroughly explained tutorial on a uh, wacky wiggly rubbery text I'm gonna get a tongue twister doing that um, and uh, I hope you guys en enjoy using this sort of look in your intros and make some interesting stuff with it so yeah that's pretty much that hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did enjoy slap a like on this video it really helps out um, and if you have any friends that are into motion design you can share this video with them send it to them on discord skype Twitter, Facebook, whatever you use. I don't, I don't know what you do. Um, but sharing is caring, and hopefully they'll find it useful too. So, I think that's the end of my spiel. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will, of course, see you tomorrow for another hashtag daily tut. Alright. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.